I have this theory that the people who do the hat on in the weird direction and the right up there with the people who do the weird lip piercing, which is they're fucking with you. Like, they're li- it's, it's antisocial. First off, it's saying, um, here's how most people wear their hat. Nah, I don't wear my hat mm-hmm. that way. That's I right. wear it in a super uncomfortable, unattractive way that does <laughs> nothing for me, and it shades the side of my neck. <laughs> It does not keep the sun out of my eyes. It doesn't keep the hair out of my face. I will fuck myself up. It's right up there with the I wear my pants somewhere around mid-crack line, like about about half-ass crack mass, like uh, my balls died and my (laughs) pants are flying at half crack. (laughs) Like, first off, you think it's comfortable to wear pants that are around your fucking hips? How can you walk like that? If a fucking car came around a corner, you'd get run over, and I'd be the first one cheering by the way, yeah. no, it's not comfortable to wear your hat. I wear ball caps all this all the time. They're sort of shaped to fit your head, which does kind of have a direction to it. It's not just sort of. Yeah, it's not a beach ball. It's got a little shape to it, and the hats and the caps are made. When you pull them sideways, it's kind of like wearing you know, it's like wearing underpants where you're gonna you know stick a leg through where the waist would go and put the leg up around your waist. Like it's fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> Now, that's uncomfortable. Also, having multiple hoops through your lower lip, A, I do not believe AIDS in your eating, lovemaking, um, your speech and debate class. <laughs> it does not help you get a get, job. Yeah. It doesn't help Employment. you do anything. Could it, help with zip lining. It's a very subtle way and not so subtle way of going, fuck you. I'm uncomfortable. I want you to feel my discomfort. I want you to feel discomfort. This hat, it's a, it's 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 an apparel equivalent to you having a booger that's going in and out of your nose as you laugh like a piston, or you having a piece of broccoli on your front yes. tooth. It's fucking me up, and I know. But the broccoli and the booger, you're unaware of. The hat, you're in charge of, and you know what you're saying. It's antisocial. It's fuck you, and the lip thing. It's forcing me to go, ow, that looks like it hurts. And then I have to do the, what if that got caught on something? And then I do that, what if you're eating one of those little mini chops, those little lamb chops? It's like uh, appetizer, you get saute. You get the saute spear, and it like somehow goes through there, and it pulled away or something. Or I'd what? actually managed to never think about that, but now I feel yucky. Now you're forced to. Yeah. Right. This is an antisocial fuck you think about me and this. And there's a million versions of it. There's a million. There's a tattoo version of it. There's a piercing version there's of it. A there's a hair color version I'm going to wear my it. hat. I'm going to wear my hair. There's I'm going to take the fucking baffles out of the pipes of my Harley so you can hear me. There's a hear me, look at me, see me, feel me thing. And my thing is, it's just fuck off. <laughs> You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. This program is intended for mature audiences only. If you have any homicidal or suicidal feelings, please consult a doctor before listening to this program. Well, you know it is, gang. Yes, it is. 3 p.m. Eastern, Thursday, the 12th of February, twenty. 15, not even kidding, that's the day, that's the date. (laughs) And this is, of course, uh, the one, the only, isn't it? Yes. HDLA's Coffee and Cigarettes, uh, today's Thursday Double Double, brought to you in part by the fine folks at Tim Hortons in New York City. Today on the big show, Yemen. Yes, Yemen is going to hell. Don't care? Well, yeah, I didn't think so. Also, we've got the first New York City supermodel with Down syndrome, now with more drool. Also, Florida's top child porn collector gives us a peek inside his <laughs> beloved collection, yes. Also, Oregon's governor is in the news, but who cares? It's Oregon, after all. Yes. Also, I've got a story about some crafty car buyers who took a salesman for a ride he won't soon forget, and hey... Who won that $564 million Powerball? Well, we'll tell you. Yeah, 
We've got your coffee shop staff today, Crash, Jenny, Louie, Tom, and George standing by. So, hey, you know what? Come on in, grab a cup, have a seat, and light one up, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for coffee and cigarettes. So, lots to talk about today on today's fine show, the Coffee and Cigarettes Thursday Double Double. And, uh, well, let's see. First of all, I guess we have to mention uh, htlaradio1.com. Go check out that website. Tell me it ain't the funkiest thing you've ever seen since the last time I told you to go to that website, which was yesterday. <laughs> no, it hasn't changed. But, hey, you know, we got uh, we got all the shows there. We got... All the webisodes there. We've got well, some pretty nice promo photos, which, uh, by the way, next week we're going to be unveiling new promo photos for HTLA. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, we had the great photographer in here earlier this week, and he did all the photos. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll have a new set for you coming out next week. That'll be fun. <laughs> And, uh, and and a heck of a show today. Yes, absolutely nothing really pertinent <laughs> or important. <laughs> no, no, we don't do that here. Well, yeah, sometimes we do. But you know what? I'm just rambling on. That's kind of pointless. Uh, reminder that today's show is... Powered by Procast. Ah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. It is powered by Procast. But for some reason, Jenny, and I don't know why, uh, I really don't, uh, this is something that only Jenny can tell us. The uh, the Procast thing wasn't loud today. That that didn't blow my ears off. I... Powered by Procast. <laughs> okay, well, that, that, yeah, that did it. All right. Ow. Yeah, thank you. Not. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show uh, today, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to have you all here, as always. And, uh, of course, the one, the only Jenny McCartney in the booth, uh, pushing the buttons, making us go, uh, and, and, of course, she is locked in the booth with absolutely no beverages uh, whatsoever. We've uh, we've done the beverage ban in there for her. <laughs> Yeah, and she's not happy about it, by the way. No, <laughs> I'm getting daggers stared at me through the window here. Ah, but what can you do? Rules are rules, and you've got to conform, right? You have to, you have to listen to those rules, don't you? Yes, you do. And... Uh, there's a very big story, of course, a breaking uh, right now today about that. And we're not going to touch that story today with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> no, we're not. Now, if you're on my Facebook, and no, it's not like Jenny's Facebook was with 5,000 people on it. No, I only have a mere 500. Yes, yeah, a tiny smattering of following. That's it. Uh, but if you were on my Facebook today, you, of course, know the, the story of the hour uh, because I've had, you know, well, half of my 500 comment on it and weigh in on it because it's a, a pretty controversial thing. And this isn't to say that we're not ever going to cover that story. No, no. But in HTLA style, of course, we have a show for everything. And, well, this uh, format and medium is uh, – not the right one for that content, let's put it that way. So uh, look for Crash Talk next week or even Straight Talk. It's talking in the corporate office today about uh, making that a Straight Talk episode because it's so damned important. But no, we've got the, the coffee shop headlines for you at this show. We like to do that, so without further ado, I'll move on here in the uh, show. And speaking of move on... 
Uh, we'll go to our first uh, call-in guest uh, live via satellite, because I like to say via satellite instead of on the phone. It's it's so much sexier. Uh, is the one, the only, Louis Lawless, my film and television directing mentor from 23 years ago now or some bloody thing. Yes, uh, he is He is on the line, isn't he? Yes? Wait a minute, I got lost. H-T-L-A. Mm-hmm. Oh, H-T-L-A. Yeah. Hell is that? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. We we have Louie. Yes, good. Uh, also joining us uh, right here in the city from his $60 million penthouse overlooking Columbus Circle is the one, the only Tom Cruise. Welcome to the show, Tom. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Good to see you here today. And uh, going back across the country again to beautiful Los Angeles, California, and Mr. George Takei at his home in, in Beverly Hills. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Well, that's that's great, George. I'm glad you're here, and uh, well, as always, you know, we're we love you, and we'll we'll never get rid of you. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, actually, no, no, I, I do have to break the news that the uh, the uh, the boss lady has spoken. We we do have to be changing up some of our lineup of uh, co hosts slash co guests, whatever you want to call it next week so uh as mentioned like a week and a half ago i did try and get alec baldwin on the show he punched me in the face (laughs) and that didn't work out well so he won't be joining us but i'm sure those fine folks in promotions and marketing for htla are hard at work getting us some quality that we just can't um you know replace these guys without sure absolutely yeah so there it is which which uh, woman are you married to or living with now the same one the what the, the mother of the daughter or the was it a boy you're you're yes yes that's it it's a boy no. oh can we cuss <laughs> can i cuss as i always do on on the show <laughs> <laughs> uh you know <clears throat> Yes, you, you feel free. I've got the button right here, and, and we'll just go ahead and move right on. Then. You want to move on? <laughs> Come on. Let's go, man. Yes. So what is the first coffee shop story of the day, you might ask? Well, it's Yemen. Yes, Yemen. <laughs> Not yes, man. It's Yemen, and it's collapsing before our eyes, apparently. Mm, yes, this is, this is very important. I, I don't know how much more important we could have gotten on today's top story. Uh, <laughs> well, the United Nations thinks it's important. The Secretary General is warning that Yemen is, quote, collapsing before our eyes and the international community can't stand by and watch. See, and and I'm of the opinion that, yes, we can. Power, that's why power is corrupt, and it is. We see it every day. We see it in every job. It's the same thing. Wow. Well, Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll go with that, Louis. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, ben Ki Moon addressed the UN Security Council on Thursday before briefings by the UN's Yemen envoy Jamal Bonamar. Alarm has risen after Houthi rebels. It, th- those guys are so damn scary, you know. The Houthi. Ooh, we are going to kill you, America. We are Houthis. The music is fantastic. Oh, you got to hear it. Yeah, Louis likes the Houthi music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and who wouldn't, right? Yes, the Houthi rebels declared that they have taken over the government of the impoverished nation that is home to what uh, some is considered the most dangerous branch of the Al-Qaeda terror network. Now, isn't this funny, ladies and gentlemen, that, you know, now all of a sudden, oh, Yemen is the epicenter of the, the terrorists, yes. Well, what were we fed two months ago? Oh, Syria. Syria is the new the new center of Al-Qaeda, evil. It's Syria. We must attack Syria. So, of course, you know, what do we do? We, we're attacking Syria now. Before that, it was, oh, it's just I- Iran and Iraq. Ah, that's the epicenter of, of Al-Qaeda. And, and what were we fed before that? Oh, let me go back to Afghanistan. Oh, it's the epicenter of the evil Al-Qaeda. You know... The story keeps changing. Pretty soon, pretty soon, mark my words, pretty soon, Montreal, Quebec. Montreal, Quebec is going to be the next Al-Qaeda center. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Are you kidding me? 
Okay, and of course Obama, with his mighty pen, is just going to go in and start airstrikes there. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, because you know it's got to be done, right? I think it's. Uh, I think it's appalling. Well, it is. It is, and um, if things don't straighten out here soon, I am going to send uh, George Takei to the White House and uh, have him tell President Obama every day about Bobby. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it. You mark my words. In fact, just to prove it. I want you to tell Tom Cruise about Bobby right now. The boys around me were uh, saying things like, um, Sally is cute, or Monica is hot. And I thought Sally and Monica were nice, but who really got me excited was Bobby. (laughs) (laughs) No one's ever said that to me. Well, yeah, yesterday I made him tell you. Tell, tell, tell him about what you liked about his body, George. What, what particularly w- was exciting was he had blonde uh, forearm hair, and he was tan that glistened. That's when, uh, what uh, caught my eye when I first saw him. Uh, he had his T-shirt on, but you can see that he had great pectoral uh, t shirt And then to see <laughs> it off. And this old gorgeous body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to like that. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, now Tom's playing that it doesn't bother him. Okay, well, let's move on with this amazing top story, shall we? Ben Omar is warning the council that instability in Yemen is now creating conditions for al-Qaeda's reemergence. Yes, my brethren, we will raise pillars of holy fire, yes, and we will do it from Yemen. They will never expect that. (laughs) Ah, whatever. The developments came as the Yemeni military, (laughs) you know those guys are crack top dudes, said al-Qaeda militants have seized control of an important army base in the south following clashes with soldiers. The officials say that at least four troops and four militants died in the fighting. Really? Four! (laughs) Wow, that's a heavy-duty military takeover. Yeah, yeah, four guys were killed. Uh Uh-huh. But even more funny, 15 soldiers were taken hostage. (laughs) Come on, I thought those Yemeni militant guys would eat a bullet before they were ever taken by by anybody. (laughs) What's going on here? Then. Oh, wait, that's right. They're not highly trained, are they? No. The officials say at least four troops and four militants died in the fighting and that 15 soldiers were taken hostage. The base is home to Yemen's 19th Infantry Brigade. Probably got about, what, 28 guys in it? (laughs) Something like that? Uh, In the southern Shabwa province. Yes, I guess that means it's shabby or something. I don't know. (laughs) The officials spoke on condition of anonymity because, of course, they're not authorized to talk to reporters, but they're going to get this word out because it's such a threat to the United States and indeed the rest of the world that Yemen has been taken over by al-Qaeda. Yes. <laughs> wow. And and where do the reports come from? Do they come from CNN? Do they come from the Associated Press? Do they come from MSN? Do they come from NBC or ABC or CBS or or indeed, any credible news source. No! No. You know where they come from? They come from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Bullshitters, never keep your mouth shut. Always hustling, always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's, that's a f- American. Look uh-huh. how they took the country away from England. Now, whatever about England, but uh, a Twitter account affiliated with, of course, the Yemen branch of Al-Qaeda, and you can identify it by at al-Qaeda underscore Yemen. (laughs) (laughs) I'm telling you, this is a 12-year-old kid somewhere in Kentucky Uh, doing this because it's fun. Yes, the Twitter account with Yemen's al-Qaeda branch considered to be the most dangerous of the terror network. That's why in the last 20 years we've never heard of them. (laughs) Yes, they're, they're the ones. Let's, yes, that's where we're going now. Well, they posted images on that (laughs) completely credible Twitter account of militants raising their black flag over the base. Ah, yes. Next there's going to be a statue, isn't there? Then we can be more like the American pigs. (laughs) Yeah. The photographs also show militants in American armored vehicles 
The images authentically could not be independently confirmed, of course, but somehow corresponded to events that have been depicted in the pictures from the non-credible Twitter account. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's... Uh I think it's appalling. Well, it is. But, you know, <clears throat> what I want to know is, why is this now an Associated Press story? They, they, they openly state here that they have not, of course, confirmed any of the report's facts because the, uh, uh, well, the, the soldiers are not allowed to talk to reporters. And, of course, the soldiers aren't allowed to talk to reporters. So what's next? We go to the next best thing, the completely credible news agency Twitter from some moron who made himself an account. <laughs> and now, all of a sudden, Yemen is the next birthplace, <laughs> the, the ground zero, if you will, that we need to now take out. I, I, that is absolutely, uh, maybe from your perspective... Well, you know, how would you see it? Huh? That's what I want to know. How would you see it, Tom? Because what what else do you take from this? They, they openly say in the story that, well, it's not a credible source, and the soldiers that talk to us, well, we can't name them because they're not allowed to talk to reporters. And I, I find that appalling when, when people who don't know what they're talking about <laughs> say things like that. Ah... <sighs> Of course, of course. You yeah. want to move on? Come on, let's <laughs> go, man. Fucking time, move on, move on. Well, of course, because we we do at this show, we have all kinds of of fun and crazy things for you. We do actually have to go for our first commercial break, but when we come da back, I I got it for you. I got it right here, and this is credible because this comes from my friend Don's Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, the first model with Down syndrome is in New York Fashion Week. Yes, she is, and we're going to present her to you with all the streaming drool down her breasts in every little detail in two minutes. Be right back. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions, abundant with rich, fertile soil? What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended ground and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness. Then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it. Now what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. The hot new accessory, brows that wow. New from Maybelline, New York, it's Brow Drama. Our first sculpting ball brush with tinted gel. Just sweep, then sculpt for bolder, sculpted brows. New Brow Drama. Get the look at Maybelline.com. fast-paced, digital everything life. There's nothing like experiencing the world's finest journalism in its original form. So sign up today for as little as $3.80 a week to receive the greatest newspaper in the world 
and all the incredible experiences that come with it. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the but best the worst part was the shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation, vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Best Talk Radio, ATLA Radio 1. Yeah, that's right, we are. And uh, <laughs> you're back today on the big program. Of course, that program being Coffee and Cigarettes on the Thursday Double Double for your afternoon coffee fun. And of course, we've we've got the one, the only Louis Lawless with us. We've got Tom Cruise, and of course George Takei. And last but not least, of course, the the one, the only, the beautiful, the intriguing, the incredible Jenny McCartney. Yes, not to be confused with Jenny McCarthy from Playboy. That is not her. Minus about twenty years, and she is most certainly not J.J. McCartney, broadcaster from. Nebraska, formerly Alaska. So yeah, we got her in the booth, pushing all the buttons, making us go. And of course, to go here, we also run on Tim Hortons Coffee. Tim Hortons, New York City. Make sure you check them out. Eight locations in the city to serve your coffee and baked goods needs. And I got to tell you, their uh, test marketing has been astounding. So we've we've got to we've got to look forward to, to Tim Hortons spreading the goodness. All over the USA here, coming up pretty shortly. Uh, so welcome back to the show. It's good to have you all here. Um, oh, I got some shout-outs. Yeah, we got some shout-outs. Uh, yeah, as soon as I can find the damn things here, because I'm completely unprepared. <laughs> yes. Ah, where is he? There we go. Am I ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. First shout-out goes, of course, to... The one, the only, Devilon Crawford, our faithful listener since day one of this show, and indeed, I think, pretty much day one of HTLA back, way back in 2010. Uh, her and Joanne Bagnall have been big fans of all our stuff, and we, we love them dearly. Shout-outs to those ladies. Uh, also, the one, the only, Greg Howe. Yes, St. Catharines, Ontario. Uh, tuning in on the big show today and every day since he found us uh, via Jenny and her what a social media goddessery. And uh, apparently we're, we're getting quite the following in Canada. Yeah, you're not kidding. What do you, what do you say, Louie? Have you, have you heard about us uh, up in, in Canada at all? And I finally figured out how to edit. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I know people are interested. I don't have a problem with that. And Tom. I also don't have a problem to say, hey, listen, you know, where I am is in a great place. Tom. Please, I'm I'm trying to talk here. Uh, to, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I want to help people. I, it's not something that I just <laughs> say. It's something that I'm, I'm actively pursue, and and that's how I feel. I feel privileged, truly. Well, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Louis, uh, just wanted to to make sure you're still there, and uh, we, we didn't lose you over the commercial break. You love to do that kind of stuff. You always did. Hmm. And put your name up there and dress in different stuff. So fantastic. <laughs> uh, if I can be of any help, let me know. So what's the email address? Uh, yes, I want you to help me dress, of course. That's that's what I want you to do. Bullshitters, never keep your mouth uh, shut. Always hustling, always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's, that's a f American. Look uh, how they took the country away from England. Yeah, well, there, you, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, now we move on with our second story of the day. And, of course, what is all the hubbub about? Well, it's about that new actress and model that you've never, ever, ever, ever heard of. <laughs> it's, it's, she's she's kind of like Yemen. In fact, hey, there's a good idea. Uh, uh, press people and, and whatnot for for the supermodel here. You guys should take note. 
if, if you if you do that thing, what was that uh, model that was in uh, Star Trek VI, George? I think her name was Iman. <laughs> uh huh. Yes, you know who I'm talking about. Um, you know, traditionally, supermodels do really good with one catchy little name like that. So, so hey, I think you know this girl is the first girl with Down syndrome uh, that is a supermodel in New York's Fashion Week coming up here, and uh, you know. Who who wants just a regular name? I, I think we should call her Yemen. Yeah? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, isn't that sexy? I like that. <laughs> yeah, so supermodel Yemen. Yes. Well, actress Jamie Brewer, best known for her roles in American Horror Story, will appear Thursday on a catwalk during New York Fashion Week. Brewer will be the first model in the show with Down Syndrome. Brewer will wear clothing by designer Carrie Hammer as part of Hammer's Role models, not runway models, show. Ah, you see what they did there? <laughs> uh-huh. It's a it's a cause show. It's not the main show. And no, that wasn't a dig about Bill Cosby. <laughs> no. And Jamie is an activist for intellectual disabilities. Well, <laughs> and we all know somebody around here who suffers intellectual disabilities, don't we? That's <laughs> it right here. I right this guy. <laughs> you are. A douchebag. <laughs> what can you do? Uh, like I say, you know. Um, Jamie is an activist for intellectual disability. She is a writer and artist and an amazing actress, uh, according to Hammer, telling Today.com about her decision to include Brewer. Brewer will wear black because American Horror Story has such a dark, scary storyline, Hammer told Today.com. Jamie has a beautiful body with a teeny waist and curves, and we went with an A-line, she said. The show is taking place at Lightbox, a digital arts and events space in New York City. Brewer tweeted images of herself getting ready Thursday morning. Uh, those are lovely, lovely images. Yes, there we go. And right. And, uh, well, let me just say this, folks. You're, you're, you're fortunate that this is radio. <laughs> <laughs> you are a douchebag. A douchebag, yes. Uh, absolutely. I think it's appalling uh, that they're still burning synagogues. In France, oh. I think it's appalling how certain Muslims are being treated. I think it's absolutely appalling when we talk about freedom of speech and oh. human rights. I think it's appalling that they electric shock people. Mm-hmm. I think it's appalling that they drug children. I know. I think it's. Uh, I think it's appalling. All right, are you done? I think it's appalling that no. they say that there are no <laughs> solutions for those things. I think it's appalling that people oh. have to live a life of, of drug addiction. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying, Tom, is do you think it's appalling? I think it's, uh, I think it's appalling. Mm-hmm. Good. Glad we got that. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it. Uh, I'm going to – no, I'm not going to make George talk about Bobby again. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that's just not fair to anybody. Um, w- well, before we go to our, our next lovely story, um, you know, what, what, what do you guys think about this? You know, I mean – down syndrome supermodels. I guess that's that's good with the whole PC thing, isn't it? You know, we just just everybody can do everything. Yes, is that that what that's saying? You know, I, you know, I don't feel it's ignorance breeds bigotry. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, true. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Louis, what are your thoughts? I always when with a female and having a relationship married or single mm. it's always better that they do the leaving <laughs> if you do the leaving it keeps it that lingering thing you know what I mean yes yes absolutely but uh, no no that that doesn't uh, doesn't work uh, George Down syndrome the, the trick is using that word in mm. a conversation oh. in your writing it's it's the use of that word that makes it uh, your own Okay. All right. As I uh, <clears throat> uh, grew up, I made another discovery. Mm-hmm. There were places called gay bars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, okay, you guys don't really have any pertinent comments about uh, Down syndrome supermodels. Louis, come on, save me, man. What do you, what do you think about the Down syndrome supermodel thing? The music is fantastic. Oh, oh you got to hear it. <laughs> 
Well, you know, it is Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week. Uh, there, there, there has been some pretty sexy, awesome music, got to say. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll go with you on that. That's fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to move on because, uh, you know, this is nothing. I, I you want to move on? Yeah. Come on. Let's uh, go, man. It's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. All right. Well, let's get into some child porn. How about, <laughs> how about that? That's always, always good for something, isn't it? Well, um, no. <laughs> no. No, but a, a collector has, uh, um, well, decided to share his collection should be noted that this story does contain a disturbing content that is appropriate, inappropriate, sorry, for young children. No one's uh, ever said that to me. Well, I know, I know. we got to get the kids off the street anyway before you start talking Scientology. That's just my two cents. Uh, Century Florida. Not today, maybe tomorrow. For months, the man behind the computer had grown used to uttering those words to himself mostly to fend off the increasing fear that somebody, maybe even the FBI, was watching his every prohibited keystroke. Hmm. Though there is indeed grave reason to worry, he could not, would not stop. The 52-year-old retired Navy communications specialist had transformed his desktop computer, laptop, electronic notebook, and multiple external hard drives into vast reservoirs of illicit images featuring sexually compromised children, some as young as one year old. Many days, his computer never stopped humming as thousands of new photographs and videos of abused toddlers and preteens poured into apartment 108 on Wild Harbor Lane near Orlando. As if flowing from an op open spigot of evil... On Among the most horrific, the image of a girl no more than seven with the words cut me and hurt me scrawled in red on her naked body as a knife is brandished in the child's direction. That shocking photograph would be seized in the spring of 2013 as part of what state investigators described then as the single largest cache of child pornography up to one million images recovered in Florida history one of the largest recent seizures in the nation. It was mind-boggling, said Florida Department of Law Enforcement Steve Brenton, the lead investigator in the case. State and federal authorities said such vast repositories of images are becoming increasingly common in exploitation cases across the U.S. One celebrated as important law enforcement victories, the large seizures and the labor-intensive analysis required of each photograph and video are now complicating the search for victims pictured in the images and others who may have been physically abused by suspects. In an estimated 75% of child pornography cases, actual physical abuse by the suspects is likely going undetected, says Michael Bork, chief psychologist in the U.S. Marshal Service Behavioral Analysis Unit. In a 2014 study of 127 uh, child pornography suspects with a known, no known history sorry, of hands-on sexual abuse, 5% admitted during traditional quest questioning to the sexual abuse of at least one child, yet when investigators introduced tactical polygraph examinations to assist interrogations, another 53% of suspects then admitted they engaged in sexual abuse of children according to the study that was co-authored by Burke. Although the offender in Flor the Florida case has denied any involvement in physical abuse, Bork, who has spent years researching child pornography cases and interviewing offenders, said traditional interrogation methods and the enormously time-consuming review of large seizures are not proving effective enough in identifying those suspects who have crossed into physical abuse. The archivist of the Macabre Florida collection now sits in a rural prison near Alabama borders where he vividly remembers the moment more than a decade ago when he claims he first crossed into the Internet's so-called dark web and began feeding an unrelenting hunger. <laughs> it's, it, it's time for a bullet. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Bullet. <laughs> Jury, uh, testimony, defense lawyers, judges. No. <laughs> nope. Just a bullet. 15 cents. Local hardware store. Go pick one up. 
Well, in a wide-ranging interview, the Inside Century Correctional Institution, the thin, bespectacled inmate with a shaved head, described his pursuit of the criminal images much like a singular obsession of a heroin addict seeking another jolt. I couldn't stop, he said, fidgeting in a desk chair. He agreed to speak with us on the condition that only his first name, John, would be used because he lives in fear of possible physical abuse <laughs> or extortion from other inmates. <laughs> um, yeah, why are we doing... See you later. Next window. <laughs> I'm not finishing that story. I'm just not doing it. I'm out of here. I'm you just... want to move on? <laughs> yes. On. Let's go, man. Yes. A bullet. That's that's the the final punctuation on that story right there. A bullet, ladies and gentlemen. That's that will fix that. We will not have to worry about that ever again. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, George, say it with me. Oh, oh my! my. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe it's that uh, love hate. Mm, it could be. It could be. I love you, but I hate you. But I, I love you again. You know, I, yeah, you, uh, absolutely. Never know. Absolutely. Yeah, Tom. You think uh, you love George? I think it's. Uh, yeah. I think it's appalling. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go for a second, two minute commercial break. When we come back, would be car buyers take a salesman for a ride he won't forget? Yeah, this is a good one. Back in two. You've got it locked to New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. The hot new accessory, brows that wow. New from Maybelline New York, it's Brow Drama. Our first sculpting ball brush with tinted gel. Just sweep, then sculpt for bolder, sculpted brows. New Brow Drama. Get the look at Maybelline.com. Good morning. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. What can I make you this morning? How about our new flatbread breakfast paninis? Made fresh, just for you, with your favorite breakfast ingredients on maple or multigrain flatbread, then grilled to hot, melted perfection. Just $2.99. Who couldn't warm up to that? Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. fast-paced, digital everything life. There's nothing like experiencing uh, the world's like, finest journalism. He called me, he called me, he called me. Film. So sign up today for as little as three eighty dollars a week to receive the greatest newspaper in the world and all the incredible experiences that come with it. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the best worst part was the shower. My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Yeah, you know it, baby. 
You are listening, of course, to HTLA Radio 1 New York. Currently 38 degrees in Central Park right now and cloudy and not looking very nice out. But hey, it could be worse. It could be 18. (laughs) Well, um, I'm a Shakespeare fan. I know, George. I know. I know. This is... (laughs) You always do this when I'm coming back from commercial. I, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but yes, for those of you who are just tuning in and don't know, George Takei is a Shakespeare buff. There you, there you go. That's uh, that's what we got on the news wire there. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and also the one, the only Louis Lawless. Bullshitters, never keep your mouth shut, always hustling, always looking for something to do and... and Putting things together, that's, that's a f- American. Look yeah. how they took the country away from England. Yeah, and uh, Tom Cruise. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good to have you. And the man who thinks I'm a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so those are the stories uh, so far today. Man, those were, were nothing but fun. i uh, got to tell you, I, uh, I can't tell you how much fun that was. Uh, yeah, so much fun. Well, anyway, we are, of course, brought to you in part by Tim Hortons New York City. Now, with eight fine locations in the city to serve your coffee and baked goods needs, check them out. Tim Hortons New York City. Um, Yes, and it is currently, right now, oh, yeah, 343 in the big city. And we are rolling on here at Coffee and Cigarettes today. We've had all kinds of fun and enlightening stories. Okay, maybe not so much fun or... Um, indeed enlightening at all uh, maybe yeah we'll go we'll go with that no, there, there was nothing <laughs> <laughs> it's just no and of course per contract uh, thanks to good old Tom Cruise and his lawyers we have to take out a moment now to discuss Tom and his discovery of Scientology and, and all that good stuff so Tom please uh, someone friend of mine actually mm-hmm. gave me this you know it's actually this picture book about suppression, you know, and a social and antisocial personalities. And I was like, what is this? You know, this is Scientology. I said, oh, I'm very interested. And uh, I, that's when I became a Scientologist about 20 years ago. Uh, there you go. Good. Thank you. People are interested in Scientology. <laughs> and I, I find that people wanted to know. Yeah. Uh, they want to know about it. Sure. And, and that's, of course, why you had to stick it in the contract to make sure that you had time to mention that every single day on the show. <laughs> right. Absolutely. That's... Bullshitters, never keep your mouth <laughs> shut. Always hustling, always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's, that's a f- American. Look mm-hmm. how they took the country away from Stepping over a line now. You're stepping over a line. You know you are. I'm just telling you right now, put your manners back in. All right. They're, they're firmly back in. And, um, yeah, George, tell him about Shatner. He enjoys being the center of everything. <laughs> yes, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> did you uh, sleep with him? I did not sleep with him. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure, you know, get that out of the way. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Well, what do we got? We still got more stories. Don't go anywhere. It's not over. Look at that. How about the would-be car buyers that took a salesman for a ride? He won't forget. You betcha. Come on down to Red, Redford Ford in Michigan. Yes, Redford, Michigan. A car salesman was taken for a ride Monday, literally. It all started when two women, two evil Islamic Muslim women <laughs> who came from Yemen asked to test drive a vehicle from Maddox Chevrolet dealership at about 4 p.m., yep. (laughs) And instead drove the salesman to McDonald's to buy food. I I didn't know that was an Islamic staple. (laughs) Maybe I'm confused. The salesman told the driver a couple of times that she could not eat in the car, but she ignored him and got food anyway, according to police reports. And at that point, hmm, what do you think happened then? Huh? What do you think? Tom, what do you think happened then? That's what they do. They, you know, you've got ADD, ADHD, and you go, what is the solution to that? Well, there isn't a solution. And now today it's take drugs. They actually wanted to put me on drugs. I know, and I, I think they should. I really, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, the more I I'm, I'm, uh, hear you every day and talk to you, the, the more I think that that's probably a good idea. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Well, the salesman told the driver a couple of times that she can't eat in the car, but she ignored him and got food anyway, according to police reports. I guess that's because she's a woman and she has the right to do that. At that point, the salesman told the driver that the test drive was over and to take the car back to the dealership. But <laughs> do you think she did that? Hell no. The woman ignored him and continued to drive several miles before turning anywhere, police reports said. But then when they got close to Maddox Chevrolet... The driver turned around again and went the other way. At that point, the salesman called 911 to report that I was being held against my will by these Islamic terrorists, according to police reports. The driver then pulled the vehicle off the road and stopped. Yes, she did. Right there, just like that. The salesman, fearing the driver, <laughs> took the vehicle keys out of the ignition. When police finally arrived, the women were yelling and officers separated the individuals to speak with them. The driver, the woman, had no response when they asked why they didn't take the vehicle back to the dealership when the salesman asked them to do so. When officers also asked them why they ate in the vehicle when they were asked not to, one woman said that because I intended to buy the vehicle, I didn't care what the salesman said. After being told by here, what would he, I'm stopping the bus. I'm, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, when you go and test drive a car, that's not your car, and I don't care what your intent is. You don't own the car. Ergo, you don't eat in the car. <laughs> Once you've paid your money and bought the car, yeah, paid your lease and signed up with your agreement. Once you have some sort of, well, really any kind of legal claim to said property, then you go to McDonald's. Well, what is so hard to understand about that simple, simple context? Uh, I, 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 Bullshitters, I, never I, keep your mouth shut, always hustling, <laughs> always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's, that's a f American. Look uh, how they took the country away from England. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so she intended to buy the vehicle, so I didn't care what the salesman said. That's it, yeah. After being told by officers that it's illegal to hold someone against their will, one of the women began to claim that the salesman assaulted her. Of course, but she could not describe when or how the assault took place. Police advised the woman that they would be transported back to the dealership and that they were not allowed back at the dealership ever, ever again. All parties apparently went their separate ways without further incident, police reports said. So so there you go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, well, indeed, of the world, we have listeners all over the world. You know what? Don't go and test drive a car and think it's yours until you actually pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I got to qualify this because, you know, most of our American listeners, uh, especially those younger generations set there, they think that everything's just theirs. They... Oh, I can have that. That's mine. Yes. Well, no, as with everything, there is always a price to pay. And until you pay it, well, you don't have the everything part right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Well, Tom, you know, it's a $60 million penthouse. Did you go up and have dinner there before you... You know, before you, you, you went and bought the place? No. Listen, we raised children. I... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but the, know, the part... I mean, no. how, do you answer that? how do you answer that question? Well, something simple, you know. Did you or did you not <laughs> go up and have dinner, or entertain your friends, etc., before you bought the thing? No one's ever said that to me. <sighs> okay, well, I'm, I'm moving on because we've got a, an important story, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, this this should have been number one. I've I've screwed up. I've got the stories out of alignment here. Um, yesterday it was on purpose, but today, no, I've I've made a, a, a terrible journalistic faux pas. I'm going to lose my job now because the top story today was not the Orient, or Oregon governor who says he won't step down. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's Oregon. Who cares, right? Well, despite speculation about John Kitzheiber's future as governor of Oregon, he insisted Wednesday that he has no plans to step down. 
Let me be as clear as I was last week, he says, that I have no intention of resigning as governor of the state of Oregon. I was elected to do a job for the people of this great state, and I intend to continue doing so until the day I die. Questions arose early Wednesday morning after Secretary of State Kate Brown abruptly left a conference in Washington, D.C. and made an unscheduled return to Oregon. Reached by KGW-TV reporter Mike Benner Wednesday evening, Katz Habner confirmed that he does not intend to resign. He said he asked Brown to return early from Washington so that he could tell her about his decision. Yes. Because he, he he couldn't do it on the freaking phone or something. We, we, we don't have we don't have those. Uh, we don't have the technology for that yet. Jeez, no. How about you get on the old uh, ever credible Twitter and uh, you know let let them know that way. Uh, Kitz Haber said that he was getting a lot of pressure from many quarters to resign. Tuesday, as you know, I went and visited. No, we don't actually because you're the Oregon governor. No, we don't we don't know anything you did. But he says, Tuesday, as you know, I went and visited the legislative leadership to get their sense of my presence in terms of the legislative agenda, he said. Brown's return comes as Kitz Haber faces calls for resignation. Brown could become governor if Kitz Haber leaves the office before the end of his term. Quote, we met privately today, and I told her again my intention was not to resign, but she is, after all, the vice president (laughs) <laughs> really? She's the vice president. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm confused here. I, I guess this Oregon government stuff is is not uh, not the norm. It's it's got to be out there. Uh, well, she's next in line, and any decision to re- re- retire or resign would obviously affect her. But I have, as I said today again, no intention of resigning the job I was elected to do. He's head of his meeting with Brown. The Oregonian reported the agency heads were being summoned Wednesday to the governor's office as rumors of a pending resignation dominated conversations inside the Capitol. The governor met Tuesday with House Speaker Tina Kotek and Senate President Peter Courtney. Meanwhile, Kitz Haber's lawyer Jim McDermott said the governor told him Wednesday that he's not resigning. A spokesman for Brown, Tony Green, said he didn't know why Brown suddenly left the conference for the National Association of Secretaries of State. She is president of that organization. Green said Brown was originally scheduled to return late Friday. Well, reached at her home today, Brown declined to comment. (laughs) So thanks for reaching out. (laughs) He called me and he called me and he called me. He kept calling me and I wouldn't answer the phone. Mm, Yeah, I wouldn't either. Brown's unscheduled return was the latest step in the saga regarding the influence peddling allegations surrounding Kitz Haber and his fiance, Sivia Hayes. Sivia Hayes. Wow, there's there's some funky, funky names out there in Oregon. <laughs> yeah. Kitz Haber is facing the biggest crisis of his nearly four decade political career. Newspapers have called for his resignation over allegations that Hayes used the governor's office to indeed land contracts for her consulting business. The state attorney general has launched a criminal investigation, and the ethics investigation has been suspended. Brown and Kitz Haber are both, ooh, Democrats. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Kids Haber canceled a Saturday appearance at a tree planting event in Tigard, Oregon. That's that's Tigard. <laughs> <laughs> like Winnie the Pooh. You've been Tigard. Yeah, so there it is. That's there that should have been the top story. I tell you, that's that's all kinds of important. I tried to, I need to try and raise twenty five thousand dollars to enter in the Academy Awards. And I think it's a fantastic risk. Because we have a tremendous chance. Two hundred. Uh, there's about two hundred members that vote on it, and they all get. You have to give them a DVD now. I know, Louis. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. And um, we'll we'll see what we can do about getting Tom to uh, to just pull that out of his pocket and give it to you once and for all. Come You're on. Stepping over a line now. You're no, stepping over I am line. not. You know you Come are. on. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> put your manners back in. My manners are firmly intact, my friend. <laughs> uh, yes, I just don't use them often. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, who won that $564 million, you might be wondering? Was it you? Well, I don't think so. 
<laughs> I've got the winners right here. Chandra Sawaitaki. Swaikati. There we go. I, I think that's right. Shanda Siwakati. <laughs> what happened to Joan Smith and Johnson in America? What? what uh, Siwakati? What, what is that? Japanese? Croatian? Uh, Eastern Bloc? Something? I think it's, uh, I think it's appalling. Uh, I know. I know. I, I'm just going to call her Chandra Johnson. Uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Chandra Johnson won it. Yep. Yeah. You had a brush with a very, very rich person. Oh, okay. She's not even a winner. She just owns the Apple Tree Food Mart in Princeton, Texas. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Love those Texas people. Yeah. Apple Tree Food Mart in tiny Princeton, Texas. Population 7,700. Is one of the three winning tickets that will split Wednesday night's $564 million jackpot. It was sold at Suwataki's store. I mean, Johnson's store. Yeah, Texas Lottery official said Thursday. Selling that ticket means a $1 million for Suwataki. Oh, oh, okay. You you get uh, you know kickbacks or something like with the mob when you put a deal together? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now forget about it. Uh, I want to help my family. He took... He? Oh, Okay. Uh, Chandra is apparently a man. <laughs> I, Jesus Christ. Really? Gender fluid store owners now? <laughs> Chandra. Okay, I want to help my family, uh, Chandra told USA Today. I have half my family overseas in Nepal. There you go. <laughs> That's where the soy takikati, soy kati wadi. Uh, absolutely. Yes, lives in Nepal. There you go. Uh, my goal is to help those that are in the remote area of the country. Oh, perhaps could that be the new Al-Qaeda Ground Zero? <laughs> yes. I want to help my family. Yes, yes. Okay, good. You do that. Winning jackpot tickets also were sold in North Carolina and Puerto Rico. Lottery officials announced early Thursday, if the winners choose to take the lump sum option, there would split $381 million. Well, before taxes, about two million after. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, two point one. God. Sue Dooley, senior drawing manager for the Multi-State Lottery Association, told the Puerto Rico ticket was first Powerball jackpot winner ever sold outside the continental U.S. Puerto Rico joined Powerball less than a year ago. Antonio Perez Lopez, assistant secretary of the Lottery of Puerto Rico, told. Uh, or sold, no. The winning ticket apparently was sold at a gas station in Cotto, Laurel, in the southern province of Ponche. Yes, Ponche, Puerto Rico. Like a handful of states, doesn't require the winner to release their identity to the public. The winning numbers were, are you ready? 11, 13, 25, 39, 54, and the Powerball number was 19. The jackpot estimate, fattened by a drought that has seen no winner since November 29th, was raised to $500 million hours before the drawing, and then ultimately to $564 million following the drawing. It's the third largest Powerball prize ever. Long, long lines formed at Powerball outlets across the nation Wednesday in the hours before the drawing in Tampa, Ben Turan and Dave Baker decided to try their luck at a Carroll Wood market where a $50 million ticket was once sold. The duo took up a collection at Carroll Wood Country Club and arrived with a fistful of cash, $222 to be exact. They took out their wallets immediately, Baker said of his co-workers. They were in and they were more than happy to be part of it. Baker and Turan weren't thinking too big. Their goals include paying off student loans and riding on a party bus but they also understand the risk of getting the fever for gambling. You get that fever, it never goes away, Turan said. The last drawing took place Saturday when the jackpot was just a cool $380 million. The two biggest Powerball jackpots ever in May 2013, Gloria McKenzie of Zephyrless, Florida, won $590 million. Yes, and I, I believe if we uh, be clear about that, she was like 98 years old, by the way. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, in November 2012, Matthew Good of Phoenix and Cindy and Mark Hill of Dearborn, Missouri, split $587 million. Powerball is played in 44 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. If you live in Alabama, Alaska, Hawaii, Mississippi, Nevada, or Utah, sorry, pals, you are out of luck. Those states don't participate. Or maybe residents there are the lucky ones. The chances of winning with a $2 ticket are about 1 in 175 million. Well, <clears throat> there's the time, guys. We are out of time. That was fun. Not. <laughs> Once again, the one, the only, Louis Lawless. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Mr. T would be proud of you. I know. I know. And he's uh, he's definitely definitely in my thoughts and prayers. Maybe we'll get him on next week. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? <laughs> no, you... No, you most certainly cannot, sir. Uh, thank you, Tom Cruise, for whipping by again today. Sure, absolutely. Uh, it's good to have you here always. I want to help people. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I just say. It's something that I am actively pursue, and, and that's how I feel. I feel privileged, truly. Well, good, good. Glad you were here. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And uh, George, George? I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for being here, and uh, we'll see you maybe tomorrow, yeah, Friday? I've enjoyed it thoroughly. It has been a fantastic experience. <laughs> I never believe him. He always laughs after everything. I never know if he's serious or not. Anyhow, tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, of course, for HTLA's Coffee and Cigarettes, the Friday Frappuccino. Always fun there. And a reminder, next week we'll, we'll apparently have new guests or co-hosts or whatever you want to call them. Those, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yes, that's about it. Once again, check out htlaradio1.com for all your, your fun, entertaining uh, broadcast needs right there. Cigar eats. <laughs> Once again, I am Chris Kraz, Jesus Taylor. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you all tomorrow.